Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And while you're here, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I'm confident you're going to enjoy the content and you're going to find these videos to be very educational, assuming you're here to learn something about Python and deep learning and semantic segmentation. Okay, in the last video, we talked about uh, semantic segmentation of aerial imagery. We used unit to train the model. And now we have a trained model that we want to use to segment large images. How do you do that? Well, you have to divide your large images into patches of 256 by 256 because that's what our model was trained on to begin with. But if you segment these patches of 256 by 256, yeah, when you put them together, do they actually fit well? Or will you have any edge effects? What do I mean by edge effects? When you use unit or any of these segmentation type of approaches, right, like deep learning approaches, you, you are actually, uh, the, the model is providing some context. The model is looking at the context of a given pixel compared to the surrounding pixels. And the central pixels always have some context. So they get segmented very well. But does the segmentation quality get compromised as you move closer and closer to the edges of the patches? If so, when you put the patches together, you will see some discontinuity. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's uh, let's see how we can actually smoothly blend. I'm going to use existing uh, library to do this. So there's not uh, a lot of extensive coding from your side. So let me jump in to show you the original source and then uh, identify a couple of bugs in the original source. And I'll show you what I have done to fix the bugs. And then let's jump into uh, the code where we use that as a tool, as a library to segment our large images. OK, that's the plan for this video. Hopefully you'll stay tuned. Uh, you'll be stay tuned throughout. And please support the advertisers who are advertising on this. OK, let's jump into the code right now. Uh, but before jumping into the code, uh, just a quick look at the library that I'm going to use. This is uh, go ahead and Google search for smoothly blend image patches. You'll probably uh, you have probably done this in the past and you'll see a, a page, uh, you know, uh, the landing GitHub page. This explains the need clearly right there. I love it. I mean, the, you see with and without uh, uh, patches, not a big difference, but uh, on some of these images, I mean, I hope you can see that without the smooth blending, you see how there is like these hard edges right there. This is coming from dividing the image into patches and then predicting on them, okay? Just stare at that for a second. I hope now you know what the problem is. Okay, I, on my data set, I cannot demonstrate this very well. That's why I want you to see this image. Now, this, this library, if you try to use it right away, there are a couple of bugs and there is some misunderstanding on how to use this. In fact, if you go to issues and look at some of these bugs, like, okay, it could not be broadcast together. Uh, I try to answer these. If you actually go all the way down, the latest response, you should see it from me. <laughs> this is me, hopefully, helping uh, others who are running into issues. And there is uh, another uh, question right there. I think I replied to most of these. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I have done to fix these, and then let's go ahead and use this, uh, use this library. So uh, very, very thankful to this original guys who have came out with this code. But uh, again, it's, uh, hopefully you'll find my video to be uh, shedding some light into this great work and also addressing the couple of bugs, okay? Now, let me open my uh, IDE right there. Uh, and here is where we left off in the previous video. We generated a, we trained a model and we, we are making sure that, okay, it's working fine. Now comes uh, segmenting a large image. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at the original code. Again, I, I put the original MIT license and everything up here. So please make sure you pro you give proper uh, you know credits to whoever deserves it. So I took I took this code that they have. I I went into smoothtilepredictions.py and then uh, I I deleted uh, the parts that do not uh, make uh, that are not relevant. Uh, some parts are predict image uh, without tiling, right? Cheap tiling prediction. I don't, I don't need that, so I just deleted that. I don't need some of these. I deleted that, so I deleted some of those, and that's what you see up here. 
and I made a couple of uh, corrections, not many. I mean, the code is amazingly good. So, and I put some notes right there. I changed this uh, from three to one to fit uh, these images, you know, uh, go ahead. This, this may be applicable to many of your uh, cases. So that's one change I did. And the other one, I think they made a mistake right here. Instead of uh, uh, padding in Y, they actually had padding in X right there. Okay, two padding in Xs. This should be pad Y for J. And they made the same mistake a couple of times. Even here, they made the same mistake. So th that's it, not many like three three mistakes but those are enough to drive you crazy right so anyway so i'm going to use this code uh to to uh by the way all they're doing again go ahead and uh, look at how they're addressing this how they're addressing this okay and then look at their blog post and get uh, uh, more understanding and everything so all they're doing is just to simplify this in plain english you divide your images into patches and now you have patches of overlapping, right? So you divide your image into overlapping patches. And in that overlapped region, you're blending this in a Gaussian way. That's the understanding I get here, okay? So you get a nice smooth prediction. That's all this is doing, okay? In simple plain English. So we're going to use this and let's go into our code, which I understand very well. So let's uh, start from scratch. Let's not leave anything from last time let's go ahead and start from scratch okay and let's import the same libraries that we imported the last time except in this case i'm importing the smooth uh the predict image with smooth windowing from the smooth tile predictions that's exactly this function okay that's what we are uh importing and then what does it need it needs your input image what the window size is the subdivisions that it's going to take care of itself we are not going to provide that predict functions right there predict function meaning yes once you divide your image into patches what do you want it to do we want it to do model.predict that's what that predict function is okay so now let's get back to the code so we can understand that better okay let's go ahead and input a random image like that we would like to test so test data test data semantic oh sorry let's go back test data let's load image 8 yeah this one let's load image 8 and hopefully we'll get something that looks like that okay when we when we are done putting everything together and so i'm loading the image i'm loading the original mask and remember we convert the original mask from R bgr to rgb yeah this is exactly what we have done for training purposes yeah um, anyway i i almost went back i don't want to make this video again one of those long ones right there and we need to import the model so we can do model.predict Again, I'm going back to show you that last time when we imported the model, we need to give custom objects because we are using custom uh, custom loss function and custom uh, metrics. So we need to tell the model that, hey, this is what I'm trying to use. That's exactly what I'm trying to do here. So to define that, I am defining my total loss right there as the com combination of dice and focal loss. Again, I really don't want to confuse you. I want to make sure this is very clear with you. So this is what we have done the last time in, during the training process. For training, we have used total loss. Obviously, when I'm importing the model, uh, I'm, I'm importing with this. Now, I don't have to do this. I can actually say uh, compile equal to false, Oops, if I can type it, and then done with this and, and delete these two lines because here I'm just predicting it, okay? Um, let's do that, why complicate stuff? Let's just do that. <laughs> so I don't even need any of these, okay? I'm just changing things while I'm doing the training, which is uh, uh, usually not a good thing to do, but fine. So where are we? So far, all we have is these, let's run this one more time, and I'm loading my image and mask. So far, so good. I need to uh, I need to uh, pre-process my image, which I'll do later on. But let's go ahead and load the model. So from Keras.models, load model, and let's go ahead and load this 100 epochs model. There you go. Compile equals to false. No issues. Okay. Now let's define our patch size as number of classes as 256 and 6. And here is how I normally predict patch by patch. I'll show you this just because. Uh, how do we do patch by patch? Obviously, you have to divide your large image into smaller patches. 
and then apply this. That's exactly what this part of the code is doing. Initially, I'm actually uh, I'm actually cropping the image to a size that's divisible by 256, and then I'm patchifying those images. And for each image, uh, uh, for each of these, I'm going to uh, go ahead and do model.predict for each of these single images, okay? And then I'll capture that prediction as a uh, into a list and convert the list into a NumPy array. Let's do that. Let's do all the way up to this point so you can see exactly what we get. This should be relatively fast. Uh, it's not that slow. I mean, even though we are doing the prediction part. So if you look at patch underscore prediction, we have five by eight, 256 by 256. So I have five by eight images, right? I need to unpatchify them, meaning I need to combine them to get my original image. And this is what uh, I'm doing right here. I'm unpatchify to the shape of my original large image. Okay, so let's go ahead and unpatchify. And let's show the unpatched prediction image right there. So you can see the unpatched prediction image right there. Okay, so this is not bad, actually. I mean, on this example, this is working great. Okay, on many data sets, this may not work very uh, very well. Okay, so on this one, this is maybe if I just look at each 256 by 256 patch and look at the boundaries, I'll probably spot some issues. Like if you see there is a gap right there, is that because there is a boundary right there and it's not doing a great job in predicting near the boundaries? I don't know, that's all hypothetical. You can just go ahead and plot individual patch and then do your own research. This part, I think you already know. Let's get down to actually. Uh, let's get down to using uh, uh, using the. I got distracted there for a second because I saw the scalar dot fit fit transform, which I have done here. Uh, do not forget to scale your input data the same way you have tra uh, scaled it during the training process. Okay, I I, <laughs> I st lost my train of thought when I, when I saw that. Okay, now let's go ahead and use this smooth tile predictions and then and then just get a nicely blended image. Again, I, I can't show you a crappy blended image in this example, but uh, hopefully uh, you'll appreciate this. Okay, so first of all, we need to pre-process our input image, right? My input image, I'm pre-processing exactly the same way I have done uh, during training. So there you go, so that's my input image. And uh, then comes uh, this function predict image with smooth windowing, right? So that's the function we are trying to use. Predict image with smooth windowing. And we need to provide all of these. Let's go ahead and see how we are providing that. My input image is the input image we just scaled. My window size is the patch size, which is 256. My subdivisions is two. I'm saying, okay, I want uh, uh, two subdivisions. I think this needs to be, uh, this needs to be, uh, a multiple of two, but this is telling me, uh, this defines the amount of overlap for windowing, okay? So uh, I will leave this to two, uh, which means I have one image 256, the other one 256, and then they're overlapped uh, like halfway through or so, okay? So that's what this is, and number of classes is six in my case, so number of classes is n classes, and what is the predict function? The predict function is a lambda function where for each uh, subdivision, for each subdivision or a patch, it's going to do model.predict. Okay, that's all this is. And let's go ahead and run this. And uh, uh, at the end of this, you'll get a one hot encoded uh, prediction, which I'm converting that to a integer prediction right here. So let's do this. This is a bit slow because now you have, uh, you're segmenting even uh, a slightly larger areas, right? The overlapped areas. So there you go. Oh man, uh, I hope it doesn't stop because of memory. <laughs> Let's see. I have to, I, sh I, I should have restarted the kernel so it releases all the memory and starts from scratch because it has a lot of things in the memory from last time. And uh, unless you restart the kernel, it's not fully released, okay? But this is, this is fine. We want to live on the edge. <laughs> so there you go. All eight of eight are done right there. Now, once this is done, we have my final prediction. So final prediction is an image that's 1479 by 2149. And again, all this is integer encoding. Now, let's convert those back to original RGB images, right? When we were training this, when we were training, we converted these into, okay, and if I can find it, we converted them, we converted, uh, you know, our, uh, our RGBs into integers, 
Now we are doing exactly the opposite. We are taking the integers like 0, 1, 2, 3, and we are saying, hey, convert that back into the RGB corresponding to building and so on. That's exactly what we are trying to do here. Okay, so I have a function, defined a function called label to RGB, exact opposite of the previous one, where I'm defining my building as that value. And then now I know what my building RGB values are. So down here, I'm saying, okay, create a new, uh, new empty NumPy array of the same size as my predicted image. And if the value pixel value is zero, replace that with a pixel value corresponding to building up here, okay? Which is our RGB values. That's it, that's what this function does. And let's go ahead and run this. And now let's apply that function to both the smooth blending one and also the other one that, that I did from my patching and unpatching, okay? And plot this on the screen so we can check them out at the same time. Um, oh, there is the plots and there it is. Let's create a bit more room so it's easier to see for you guys, okay? So there is the testing image, there is the label. This is the prediction with smooth blending. Here is the prediction without smooth blending. The prediction without smooth blending is slightly smaller than other images. That's because I'm cropping it to be divisible by 256 because that's what my, my code can handle, okay? Other than that, you can see I hate these things when they don't go away. Okay, <laughs> there you go. And now you can actually see uh, I don't know if you can see the difference, but you see this is this is where, I mean, we got much better prediction like for that little part right here, and you got a nice prediction right there, and uh, where else do we have, uh, where else do we have? Oh, I think this is a nice area to focus on. Can you guys see this part? I hope I can plot that. Let's just plot, sorry. I want you to see the advantage here or the effects of not doing that. I mean, if you see right there, so predict uh, without smooth blending, let's just plot that single image. So you see right here, the straight edge, yeah? This is the edge effect. It's It has the straight edge right there, and you can kind of see that running down here. Even here, there is a corner, okay, right there. And here, there is a corner, edge right there. I hope you can see that. And this is this made this discontinuous. Uh, and if you go back to this image, that edge is nice right there. It's actually matching this very well. And if you keep going down, you see that line is gone. Uh, let's only do with smooth blending. Yeah, I really want you to appreciate the smooth blending. That's why I'm uh, going back and forth. So if I go back here, you see that line? You can kind of see that right there even right here. If I go down to smooth blending, that's gone. You get very nice and smooth uh, predictions right there, okay? I can't even figure out where else those edges lines are. So if this is 256, another draw another line right around here at 256 and you'll probably see some artifacts and you'll probably see some artifacts. Same with horizontal direction. So uh, I'll let you study this. See the corner right here? <laughs> Something going on and if I come down, there is a nice smooth area going on. Okay, so this is how you can use smooth blending. Again, someone else already did the work. I modified this a little bit. I'll share you all of this code. Look at the description uh, for my GitHub uh, page. And I really hope you appreciate the effort I'm putting into this. So please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys.